Quantrill's Raiders, the Hole in the Wall Gang. Colorful names for bands of outlaws that roamed the West during and after the Civil War. No one earned more fame, however, than Jesse James, the Robin Hood of Western Outlaws. Most historians maintain that Jesse was killed six years after his doomed Northfield, Minnesota raid. Yet in 1948, J. Frank Dalton claimed he was Jesse James. Is it possible that Jesse James could have perpetrated a hoax on the entire country for over 60 years? Jesse James was a lad who killed many men. He robbed the Glendale train. And he stole from the rich to give to the poor. Everyone knew of his name. Jesse had a wife to mourn for his life. Two children, they were brave. But that dirty little coward that shot Mr. Howard laid Jesse James in his grave. It was on a Saturday night. Jesse was alone, talking to his family so brave. Robert Ford came along like a thief in the night and laid poor Jesse in his grave. Jesse had a wife to mourn for his life. Two children, they were brave. But that dirty little coward that shot Mr. Howard laid Jesse James in his grave. Yeah, that dirty little coward that shot Mr. Howard laid Jesse James in his grave. On April 3rd, 1882, Jesse James was straightening a picture when suddenly a gunshot was fired. Reports said that Jesse James was dead. Was it really Jesse James who was shot in the head that day in Kearney, Missouri? By examining his life, we will perhaps find an answer to the question of his death. Jesse James is the only outlaw whose birthplace has been immortalized as a state monument. The house's curator is Dr. Milton Perry. Jesse James is America's Robin Hood in legend. I don't think there's any question about that. The famous Robin Hood story uh, is the one in which Frank and Jesse were returning from a robbery, and depending upon where you've heard it, it could have taken place in Missouri or Arkansas or Kentucky or, or wherever. And they stopped at a farmhouse and asked for, for lunch. The farm lady, and that was a customer at the time, consented and was fixing their meal. And while she was doing this, they noticed she was crying. And they asked her the reason why. And she said that she was a widow with two young children and that the house was, was, was a mortgage and the mortgage would be foreclosed that afternoon. So Frank or Jesse supposedly tell her that they are Frank and Jesse and they would like to help her pay off the mortgage and they asked her how much it was. She named the sum, they gave her the money, they left, the banker came, the mortgage was paid, it was burned, but strangely on the way back, the banker was ambushed by two masked men who stole all the money he had. John Quantrill led a group of ex-Confederate raiders of which Frank and Jesse were members. Frank and Jesse both joined Quantrill's raiders during the Civil War because they were a very popular unit from this area and they were directly associated with a number of Quantrill's men. And during that period of their career, as a part of the uh, operation of the guerrillas, they would capture towns and, of course, among the towns, in the towns were the banks. And so they had perpetrated daylight bank holdups as a part of their military actions. But strangely enough, it had never been done in peacetime until it would happen here in Liberty. The Liberty Bank raid, recreated from eyewitness accounts, established a method of operation for Jesse and Frank. Jesse, the more aggressive, would charge forward while Frank held bank personnel at bay. On their very first holdup, they managed to secure more than $70,000, a small fortune at that time. The 
gang was probably originated with Frank and probably at Frank's instigation along with, with other people. Jesse seems to have joined the gang more as an afterthought than anything else, but he gradually became the leader of the gang probably because he was more of a team person and was probably a more popular person and convinced people to his ways. Jesse was much more outgoing than Frank, very friendly, had a very strong sense of humor, and was a very easygoing person and had a lot of friends and knew a lot of people. Frank was just the opposite. Frank was very quiet, very dour, very taciturn, probably never told a joke in his life, liked to read and quote Shakespeare, and was a very, very private person. It's an interesting story that they managed to, to stay in business for 16 years, and they were never caught. Jesse, of course, was killed, and, and Frank surrendered, partially because of the fact that they were very popular in the, in the way they operated. You have to remember that they, that they concentrated on banks and railroads. They didn't hold up the corner grocery store, they didn't mug people for the milk money, and they didn't burglar people's homes. They became very popular in that banks and railroads were among the most hated institutions by the average people in the country. So they had lots of friends, and these friends would hide them out. By 1876, the strain of outlaw life was taking a toll on Jesse and the gang. Jesse was forced to tour saloons looking for members who had been drinking. of being seen in town before a job cut the odds of getting away. Jesse was afraid that someone might recognize them and set up an ambush. 